Welcome to Oma. We're just south of Oma. We're looking at a road under which the trains used to run. We're looking south towards Dungannon and I believe the trains used to run here underneath this road, underneath this bridge and on up into Oma. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to trace the route of the old Oma to Derry Railway. We're going to follow it all the way up to Derry. We're going to go through the centre of Oma following the line up to uh, this point. So this roundabout is roughly where the old railway meets the modern A5. And as I stated in my other video where I traced the Dungannon to Oma route, this stretch of the A5 through the centre of Oma was built on top of the old tracks. And then the tracks divert again out into the fields north of Oma and the A5 takes its own path. So when you're driving through the middle of Oma, this is a very convenient bit of driving here because it's all grade separated. It was grade separated over a century ago for the benefit of the railway. Now, if we're going to get the line reopened, as I discussed in my other video, how are we going to do it? How are we going to get this line through the center of Oma? Because it has to go through the middle of Oma. It can't just come in here as a dead end from Dungannon because it has to be able to continue all the way up to Derry. And it really needs to be in the center of town where people can get at it, where people can walk to it. Now, one suggestion I made in the other video was that we follow this path up here through this green space, cross Campsey Road, and then hang a left up through this green space, so through the floodplain, cross the river a few times, out the other side of Oma, pick up the route over here again. And there are advantages and disadvantages to this. It would need to be built on a viaduct, which would be a major structure. I'm sure we could make a very attractive structure and it would become a symbol of Oma. It would be its equivalent of the Golden Gate Bridge and so on, but it would be hugely expensive to do. And it would be quite disruptive. You'd have to go across the road here. Nice old building there. I wouldn't want to demolish that. There is a bit of space here in between buildings on this side of the road, but on this side of the road, there are there's a handful of homes here and a primary school which may not be possible to relocate easily and you'd have a giant structure crossing over this road you could put the train station right here this is this leads into the main street in oma so it wouldn't be the worst location for a train station I'm not sure how the people of oma would feel about that it would be a significant change to the character of their town and the other option I suggested was that if you could build a, a bypass around Oma, you could then take this road out of service as a road and return it to the railway, put the tracks right back where they used to be. Now, you may be aware of the controversy about the A5 dual carriageway project. This is a major project, a proposal to connect Derry and Monaghan by an enormous road that they're talking about building like hundreds of millions of euros, Irish government willing to pitch in money. Last time I checked it was still in legal limbo. Uh, some people are objecting to it on environmental grounds. Now, there are people who say that reinstating the railway should be a higher priority, which I happen to agree with. However, that being said, what if we only built a section of the F of the new dual carriageway? We built our ring road around Oma, then that would free up this section of the current A5 and allow us to relay the tracks and get the railway reopened. Now how would that work in practice? Well this is where the route of the railway meets the road. What you could do is this roundabout you could remove, replace it with a bridge. So this little connector road here, A505, that would then go over the top of the railway and you would leave this piece of road intact and that would then connect to your new dual carriageway farther south. And then you'll work your way north. Incidentally, there's a little line of trees going up here. There used to be a little branch line. This indicates the remains of a little branch line that went up as far as Duns. I would imagine that was for cargo purposes, hauling freight on the river, something like that. But uh, back to the script. We wouldn't have to make too many changes here. There's already grade separation here at Dublin Road. A pair of slip roads here onto the road and just close the slip roads. No longer needed because there's no longer a road down there for cars to drive onto. 
there's a pair of access roads here just remove them that would then become a dead end up against the tracks and incidentally just to make a further improvement I would build a footbridge from this housing development across here and then people could walk through into the middle of town without having to double back on themselves and walk through this busy junction and we have more grade separation here no need to change anything except closing off this little dead end here Kelvin Avenue no longer any need for access to the road so close that there's a footbridge here to the school leave that in place no need to change anything there Dramore Road James Street no need to change anything there that's already grade separated and then at this this is where it gets a little interesting here there would need to be a reconfiguration here if we're going to restore the railway then we no longer need this enormous monstrosity of a junction I'm going to get on my soapbox here for a second look at the number of lanes here one two three four five six lanes wide that's ridiculous that's far too many lanes for a road to have in the middle of a town so what you could do if there's no longer this enormous road running through the middle of the town like a giant canyon you no longer need this giant junction so you would just replace this junction with a simple bridge crossing over the tracks and this could which is two lanes here you could just keep it at one lane in each direction all the way across into railway towers and then you would put the station right back where it was originally which is here so this building here the station center named after what used to be there named after the railway station that it has replaced that could be the site of your new station these old buildings here were part of the original station these old walls were part of the original station keep those so a lot of potential there so the railway would continue there's a little access road just close that no longer any need for it Brook Street, that's already grade separated, no need to change anything there. Notice how it's called the Great Northern Road, by the way, named after the Great Northern Railway that it's replacing. There's a Brookmount Road, this connects a large housing development to the F5. You could just close that off because that's uh, running up against what would now be the railway. And if you want to get out of this housing development and onto the new A5, this is where you would do it over from this side because remember, there's a dual carriageway now running. There's going to be a dual carriageway running on this side, so this is where you would connect to that housing development. And similarly, there's a, an industrial estate, industrial area here. It's got an access road onto the current A5. You would simply connect it to the A5 on this side instead, to the new dual carriageway. Same here. And interestingly, there's a little private property here or a large private property that must predate the railway because the access road to it continues on the other side of the F5 and goes down to this road so this would need to have its own little private grid separated bridge over the top of the railway shouldn't be hard to do though and then the entrances to this industrial estate under the current F5 just close them off You might want to think about putting a, a bridge over here. So I really think this is an achievable goal the more I think about it. If we do get our new dual carriage we're running to the west of Oma, this awful busy road running through the middle of town becomes redundant, no longer needed. Just put the track, tracks back down where they were before, put the station back where it was before, which is a, a stone's throw from the town centre. That's where I would put it. So let's pick up, let's start pressing on northward. Let's take a look at where the, the line used to go from the street view. As stated in the other video, this is where the trains used to go, down this lane, past this house, and out into the country. So if we're gonna get the line reopened, <clears throat> we'd need to make some sort of arrangement for uh, the fact that we're running so close to these sports fields, there's a rugby club here. You might want to shunt those fields over a little bit. One thing I would say is that 
A railway is not the worst thing you could be living beside. It's not like you're living beside a motorway. Motorway, constant noise all the time, pain in the neck. I used to live beside a freeway myself. Couldn't even open the windows in the summertime because of the noise and the pollution. A railway spends most of its time silent. And a train comes along once every 15 minutes at the most. You get 20 seconds of noise and then it's back to silence again. So a railway is much easier to live beside than a motorway or a dual carriageway or a large road. A little bridge here crossing over still seems to be intact. That's a common theme for this route. There's a lot of bridges still intact across the rivers. So let's keep on following the route of our railway line. See if we can find the ghosts of it. The tree line. Yeah, we're coming up to a little place called Mountjoy here. It looks like a private access road has been built on top of the old tracks. And there used to be a station at nearly exactly this point. I think the station was in there, but there's not a whole lot of evidence left of it. Don't know if it was a major station or just a little halt or whatever. Keep going north. Tree line merges with the... Uh, I believe this is the F5. This stretch of the F5 was built on top of the old tracks. So to reopen the line, we're going to have to run alongside the road here, I think. And then we get, this is where it gets really interesting. A lot of possibilities open up here. This is the Ulster American Folk Park. And the old railway line ran right through the middle of it. Now, a lot of structures have been built on top of the old right of way or very close to it. So I don't know how feasible it is to get a live commercial railway running through the, uh, the middle of the park but there should definitely so we could cut this corner a little bit I mean it curves and arcs a little bit there to the left so we could maybe cut that corner a little bit and shorten the route slightly but there should definitely be a railway halt here imagine being able to hop on a train in Derry or Porter Down and go straight to the Ulster American Folk Park you would get a lot more visitors and you could also do a little line into the park itself, not following the ex the original exact route, but you could have the possibility of you know Her heritage railway enthusiasts could run steam trains down here. You could put turntables in for the steam engines. You could put a a shed in for the steam engines. Do a little railway museum. That's another possibility. Lots of possibilities with this. Here's the old line crossing over the river. There's a bridge still intact. I wonder can we see it from the road? Yep, there it is. Still in one piece. Quite a few bridges on this route. I like that. So we're following the route from the trees, up and then they disappear. And we pick up the route again here. I think. Yep, there's another railway bridge. I don't think we can see it from the road because there's too many hedges on either side of it. Uh, I think this piece of road is built on top of the old tracks. And then the track diverges again. Maybe they didn't want to build the road too close to the river. Afraid of people driving into the river, maybe. Or was it a floodplain? Prone to flooding? Okay, now we're getting into Newton Stewart. So again, I think this piece of road is built on top of the old tracks and the station at Newton Stewart was about here, I think. Yeah, there it is. There's not much left of it now. You can just about see the remains of it from the road. This old wall, I believe is all that remains of the station. Now just to back up a little bit, look at where this line goes. It goes across the river and then south across the river again. Why did they not just go south of Newton Stewart and avoid the river completely? Would it not have been cheaper to avoid building two bridges? Well my theory is getting this close to the river was intentional because back then when this line was opened, the rivers and the canals, all the inland waterways were still an important piece of the transport network. Goods were still moved by, by using water in those days. I had a teacher in school who remembers barges and lighters coming into Portadown to, to, to unload their goods. 
So that wasn't so long ago. So there would have been a reason for a railway station to be close to a river in those days. It would have been a, a trans-shipping point between two modes of transport. So that's no longer an issue. There's no longer a compelling reason for train stations to be close to rivers for that purpose. So if we're going to get this line reopened and we want to save a bit of money, you know, you, we might want to cut this corner a little bit and go south of Newton Stewart instead of to the north. Just a suggestion. But anyway, let's pick up the old line. <clears throat> there it is. We're running through the fields. Unmistakable. Disappears and reappears. And we have another bridge intact. Can we, is there a road nearby where we can see it from? I don't think there is. No, too many hedges in the way, so we can't see that bridge from the road. The Morn River, which I believe feeds into the foil, becomes the foil eventually. Okay, here we are at Victoria Bridge now. This is rather cool. Disappointingly, the, the tracks run into a housing development. There's a big housing development in the way. But there's something I want to show you here. This house. It has a little railway signal beside it, so there must be a railway enthusiast living there now. But the design of this house jumped out at me when I saw it because it is identical to what I saw in my other video. This is the station master's house at the old Castle Welland station on the Newcastle to Van Bridge line. And this must be the station master's house at this old Victoria Bridge station. And these were both built on the same railway. The Great Northern Railway owned both of those stations. So the Great Northern Railway must have built, must have built these houses for their station masters and they used the same style. Different colour brick, same style, same plans, same architect. Fantastic. Let's press on. I'm not sure how we're going to deal with this housing development here when we get the, uh, the line reopened. I have to divert the line or something. Now the bridge crossing the tracks, I wonder can we see it from the road? I think there's a hill in the way, so we can't see it. Never mind. Let's press on. Keep going north. See a little discoloration in the field. I wonder if a different soil, different type of soil was poured in there to fill the cutting. Produces different colored grass. Still leaves a little clue as to where the tracks were. Here's another bridge. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah, there it is. But rusty. Could use a bit of could use a lick of paint, but still seems to be in one piece. And are we getting into cyan mills here? Yeah, we're getting into cyan mills. And I think cyan mills station was about here. Somewhere near here. And just another soapbox moment, this chimney. We used to have a chimney like this in Lurgan at the Johnson Allen linen mill. Big red brick construction. Fantastic thing. Loom, loomed over the town, taller than the church steeples. I thought it was a really impressive piece of engineering. And then I was enraged when I went home one year and discovered that it was gone. I don't know why they took it down. Did someone decide it was an eyesore for some reason? I mean, look at it. They're magnificent piece of your industrial heritage. The amount of work that went into designing this thing and building it and maintaining it. Why would you demolish something like this? I don't get it. But anyway, we're looking up the old railway here in the Willows. Let's keep following the tracks. crossover point here. I don't think there's much evidence of a railway crossing. It's a fairly main road and yeah. 
can see two hedges lined up together there, but apart from that, there's not much of a clue that trains used to pass through here. This must have been a level crossing. And there's a housing development. I think we're getting into Straban at this point, aren't we? Yeah. So with Straban, we're in a similar situation to Oma. Uh, let's just, I mean, this housing development gets in the way. I'm sure we could divert the, the new line slightly to the left and cut this corner. Because you don't have to follow the original tracks all the time. But the this is where the route came, and then this Great Northern Link, named after the Great Northern Railway that it replaced. This piece of the A5 was built on top of the original railway, all the way through Straban. Now, one good thing is that there's not many entrances onto this piece of road. There's only one entrance from this housing development. So, if we were to reopen the tracks, I mean, if we did the same thing here, remember the A5 is to link Derry and Monaghan. And if the F5 were to come down here on either side of Straban, this road then becomes redundant as a road and we could reopen it as a railway. Look how few entrances there are onto it. So I'm sure we could come to some arrangement here. Incidentally, here's another little thing that grinds my gears. So there's a school here and there's a series of cul-de-sacs here, all dead ends. What if you're a school pupil here, you live in, say, this house, and you want to get to this school. How far away is it? As the crow flies, not very far, a thousand feet. So how do you get to it though? Well, you have to double back on yourself, come out of your cul-de-sac, out onto this road, onto a busy main road. All the way down here. So a journey of a thousand feet because of poor urban planning becomes a journey of about a mile and a half. This is one of the problems with cul-de-sacs. This is one of the problems with infrastructure and development that's built with the car in mind. These housing estates are built for people who have cars. They are not designed for people who want to walk anywhere. And once you start to notice this sort of thing it becomes really annoying. One way to solve the problem is you could build a footbridge from here, cross our new railway, and then have a footpath and a bicycle path into the school. That would solve the problem. Round over. Okay, let's go into the center of Straban. I believe the railway station was... Okay, maybe not. I thought it was here. Did I miss it? Oh, it's on the other side of the river. Okay, that's it. Yeah, so this bridge, I wonder if this bridge carried the original railway. But the station in Straban, I believe, would have been around here somewhere. As a clue here is the name Railway Street. This is an awful bit of development here. This is a retail park. I mean, there is a footpath provided here on most of the roads, but these, this, this is a shopping centre to which nobody will ever walk. You know, again, this is the kind of infrastructure that's built American style. Totally hostile to the pedestrian. Can't walk anywhere because everything's spread out so far. You know, if you want to walk in from the road, you have to act like a car and walk through a big car park where you put your life at risk. So I'll do a separate video on that sort of thing. It's one of those things that grinds my gears. That sort of development is the enemy of anybody trying to get railways reopened. Because railways are fundamentally built around pedestrians. This sort of thing is built around the car. And these are two incompatible land uses. More on that later. And let's keep following our path here. Where is our railway? I think this is it. And when I was looking at this earlier, I saw a separate thing here. 
I didn't see this marked on any historical railway maps. There was no railway here, but it looks like a man-made thing. It's a similar, see how it leaves a trail through the countryside. Something long, linear and man-made used to be there. And my theory is that it was a canal, because it eventually feeds into the foil. There it is. And our railway runs alongside it. There are a few crossover points there, but uh, not much evidence really that a canal was ever there. There's a canal car park, and there's a giveaway. So the existing canal, I think, ends about here, but it did seem to go a whole lot farther. It would be interesting. Would be nice to get that reopened again. Get a canal leading all the way into Straban. Nothing wrong with a good canal. I mean, in those days, it was for uh, transport purposes, but nowadays, more of a leisure use. So, where's our railway? Where did it go? There it is. <clears throat> crosses over the river and crosses into Donegal at this point. Let's keep following it up through the fields. Is this it? I believe it is. Or is it? Yeah, lots of hedges lined up here. Definitely an old railway. Getting close here to see it. I think this is the path of the tracks. There's a cricket club. Goes through here. Not a whole lot has been built on top of this line. I was going to do a separate video for Straban to Derry, but having looked at it, the path seems pretty much open. There's the remains of an old bridge. See the piers? Shouldn't be hard to get a bridge rebuilt there. Someone's built a home on top of the tracks. I think we're still in Donegal here, aren't we? I have a crossover again. There's a sewage treatment. Well, it's a foiled food group. I was going to say a sewage treatment plant. It's a food processing plant. Right on the border. Look at how undeveloped this right of way is. Nobody gets to see it now. I would say if you got the railway reopened here, running along here, it would be one of the great scenic railways of the world. It would be a remarkable. Remarkable journey, Mr. Band of Derry. Such a scenic route. There's a housing development in the way here. That could be a problem. And then we end up going up through this park all the way up to the Foil Railway Museum. And look at the location. We're right beside Craig Avon Bridge. And the historic walls of the city are about... Where are they? I think I see them here. So all the fascinating things Derry has to offer, all accessible, potentially from a train station at this location, if we get that line reopened. I can't seem to get the street view working there. Google gets a bit confused sometimes. There it is. Foyle Valley Railway Museum. Doesn't look like the original building was very much built in the style of it. The old railway style gets here, very cool. So, yeah, that's the uh, that's the Oma to Derry railway line. So, not the hardest railway to get reopened. I think it's uh, it's a significant length. That concludes my series really on what was called the old Derry road. So, I invite you to look at my other videos where I traced the route from Portadown to Dungannon and the other one where I traced Dungannon to Oma. So it's, a, so it's three in this series. And I think getting this railway reopened should be a higher priority, I think, than any road projects. The only way road projects should be pushed ahead is if it enables us to get the railways reopened.